Good morning, everybody. So, today we will be repowering a old McLean Edger. This is a lawn edger from probably the mid 1980s, if I had to guess. Originally came with a two horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. Um, bought it used, that motor kind of blew up shortly after I bought it, bought it for 50 bucks. And about 15 years ago or so, I put what this uh, blue engine on here. I uh, paid $100 from Harbor Freight. It's a six and a half horse Greyhound gas engine, model 66015. It still runs, but there's got so it's got some minor problems, and I'll give you a quick look see. Okay, so as you can see here, the fuel tank is broken off right here where this mounting bolt goes, and this one is like starting to be on its way out. So could I get a new fuel tank? Yeah. Um, is it worth it? Nope. Harbor Freight had to sail on these motors for $99.99 yesterday, um, down from $160. So rather than put, you know, 40 bucks a fuel tank in there or 30 bucks, whatever that costs, the stop switch sometimes falls out. Um, the carburetor probably needs a little bit of work. It stutters a little bit. It's just not worth it. Just get a brand new engine. Um, so I might keep this one around for parts for a bit. This engine, though it says Greyhound, is actually made by a company called Lifan. This is a model 168F. I believe you can still get parts for these. Um, not sure how easy they are to get parts for because I haven't seen Harbor Freight sell this model in a very long time. So, again, not worth it. Just get a new engine. Now, if you're looking carefully, you may have noticed that I already started this before I even recorded this video. The uh, engine bolts have already been removed. So let's lift this motor off and out of the way. I'll take the pulley off of it, but that's not a big deal. Now, like I said, this engine originally came with a two horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine. I just pulled a six horsepower engine off it, or six and a half, whatever it is. Um, bigger engine, so you need these little spacers here. They're little, little aluminum spacers. I think Briggs and Stratton makes them. I'll see if I can dig up where I bought them and leave a link in the description. If you don't use those, your engine will get caught, like it'll rub here, here, here. you won't be able to mount it, it just won't work. Um, so you need these spacers. Now because you're adding spacers, you'll need bigger mounting bolts. I found 5 16 by 2 and a half inch bolt seems to be just about the right length. So you'll need four of those as well. And also some kind of you know washers for top and bottom. And I like to use these these nylocks locks here just to prevent the nut from backing off over time and vibration. One thing you might want to check when you have this thing apart is because this thing shakes like crazy, I found that these bolts sometimes back themselves out. Um, so best to make sure those nuts are tight, maybe back it off a couple turns, shoot some Loctite in there too, just to make sure they don't come apart. Let's set our replacement engine in here. This is a Predator 212, so actually a bit more powerful than what came off of there. I mean, this is kind of silly. I don't need this much power, but this is the, I guess the smallest engine that Harbor Freight offers that isn't that little two or three horse, the 80 cc, which is probably going to be a little, too, a little bit too small. Plus that engine is more expensive than this one anyway. I actually realized the two and a half inch bolt might be too short. So I just got this on there hand tight, and I don't think there's going to be enough meat to catch that little nylon insert. I'll give it a try though. So if we hog this down a little bit, it's going to happen. I might have to get a slightly longer fastener. Yeah, it might be okay. Get the other side hogged down and see what it looks like. Nope, two and a half is going to be too short. I'm going to really, going to need to find two and three quarter or three inch bolts. That's unfortunate. So let me run to the hardware store and I'll pick it up when I get back. Okay, after messing around at the hardware store for 35 hours, I got some uh, three inch long bolts, stainless steel. Don't have to be stainless, it was just what they had in stock at the time. 
Um, it looks like it's going to be kind of a tight fit to get a three inch bolt in there. I might have to cut it down. Shove this up through the bottom. Might have to loosen this a bit. That might work. So then we'll put a washer on there like so. I suppose we can always turn the bolt upside down too. Okay. Just gotta do that for the other three. Okay, I got all the bolts added. They're just kind of loose right now, just to, you, know, you can move the motor around a little bit. Um, the three inch bolts I did not have to cut, so three inch should be fine with these spacers and this engine. Now the next uh, item on the agenda is to remove the pulley from the old engine and transfer it over to this one. Let me haul that thing onto the bench here. This is what we're dealing with. Let's Where's our set screw? Okay, there's our set screw right there. You get an Allen key to loosen it. Generally not a good idea to use a puller on a pulley like this, but I'm not expecting it to put up too much of a fight. As you can see, it's already coming out, even just using my fingers to tighten this. I am going to need a spacer though. Just shoved a 716 socket in there. Time. Now we gotta transfer the pulley over to the new engine. Cut Mr. Zip Tie. Throw a bit of fluid film on there. We might need not need not need the puller next time. Fits like a glove. Now you want to sight down your pulley and line them up as best you can. It's pretty close. And we'll get the set screw in there. Okay, I got some gas from the old engine. It only looks this dark because I added some fuel stabilizer to it, which is red in color. Dump that in here. Don't worry, the gas is fresh. They say you're supposed to run this for a couple hours under light load just to break it in and then Oh, there's a procedure, read the manual. All right, um, I already added oil to it a while ago, but let's just give it a quick check, make sure it's okay. It was pretty filled, so it might overflow a tiny bit. Yeah, so oil's good. Just using 10W30, nothing fancy. We have fuel, 
So now we should be good to run it for a while. I don't have a belt. The belt actually broke yesterday, which is why you don't see one on here. Got one of those on order. Now, another thing I wanted to call out, standby. As it turns out, they have a couple different variations of this engine, and this is the one with a really crappy air filter. So if you open this cover here, you'll see it's just this stupid little thin piece of foam. And over time, these things just disintegrate and they get sucked into the carburetor. The old one had a nice pleated paper filter, like Honda style, but much better. Make sure you drop it, because that's important too. Where I was going with this is because this is on a lawn edger, which is going to be living in a fairly dusty environment, I decided to buy the air filter that comes with the other one, the other model. So, don't have the air filter yet, but it's, this is good enough just to run it for a little bit. All right, engine is mounted. So as you can see, it does fit. It's a big, big motor for this little frame, but it does fit. Clears just fine down there, clears the bottom with those spacers. Let's get it on the ground, start it up, and let it run for a little while to break it in. Okay, we confirm we have oil. Let's put our ignition to on. Turn our fuel on, and then we'll do, I think that's choke right there, we'll do about mid-throttle. It's kind of odd that the rope is going the wrong direction, but I think you can change that. Let's give her a tug. Not bad. Okay, just ran the gas out, ran it for a while. Um, we're gonna let it cool down and then we'll probably dump the oil. Okay, I think that's cool enough. Use a 10 millimeter to loosen the oil drain plug. Jeez, that's tight. Use our three ace ratchet. Did it. I got a drain drain pan on the floor. Oh, well, a little shiny. Not tragically so. Put the drain plug back in. It's a good idea to drain the oil after a brand new engine's been running for a couple hours because whenever the thing's machined, factory does a pretty good job of cleaning up after itself, but inevitably there will be some additional, well, there'll be some additional machining that the engine does all by itself, right? So as uh, the rings are seating, the cams wearing in, the tappets are wearing in, all that metal has to go somewhere. It goes into the oil. In addition, the factory will use typically some kind of an assembly lube when they put the thing together. Not that it's bad, but Good to get that out of the crankcase. 
So that's uh, probably our two hour oil change. Really not a whole lot in there. It's a little shiny, but that's to be expected. If it was this shiny on after say 20 or 30 hours, I'd be a little bit more concerned. Let's add some fresh oil. I'm gonna be using just regular old Amazon Basics 10W30. Some people will say you should use non-synthetic when you're breaking in. It really doesn't matter all that much. It's a lawnmower or it's a outdoor power equipment, not the space shuttle. Got a little bit too much in there. It'll just drip out. Just to give you a better idea of the oil. A little glittery. Okay, it's a couple days later. I may have mentioned earlier on in this video that I was not pleased about this air cleaner being just a piece of foam. If I didn't, I'll mention it now. So, kind of chintzy, right? I mean, it's, it's foam, it's, I guess, reasonable thickness, but this is an edger. It's gonna be close to the ground. It's gonna pick up a lot of dust. So, they make an air cleaner assembly for this thing that has an actual proper air filter. It's not that expensive. I think it was this whole thing was 15 bucks. And that includes a pleated paper air cleaner element underneath this foam. So proper air filter. So we're gonna take this thing off. We're gonna swap this thing on there. Oh, and uh, I did swap the wheels out. Um, I know this is a little off topic, but you notice the wheels are nice, new, and shiny now. And the reason for that is I was able to find some aftermarket wheels for this thing. The OEM McLean wheels are actually like $40 a piece. I mean, they're insane. These wheels, I think, were $7 a piece. They got ball bearing wheels. Um, the catch is that the wheels are half inch ID inside diameter bearings, but the shaft up here and back here is 716. So what I did is I bought this, uh, I think it's just, I don't know if it's probably nylons. I don't know, some kind of tubing from McMaster car. Um, and that acts as a spacer between the 716 shaft and um, the half inch ID wheels. And it actually works perfectly. I mean, you could, I'll show you what it looks like real quick. So you can kind of see here, there's that little plastic tubing I was just showing you. There's the ID of the wheel and there's the only jiggle you see here is actually in the bearing, right? So that works out really nice. Got some new wheels, four new wheels for this thing. Um, probably for about what a single wheel would have cost for the McLean OEM wheels. I'll leave a link in the description for these wheels if you want to pick them up too. Again, they were pretty inexpensive. They're metal hubs. The, the other ones were plastic. I mean, it's, these wheels are quite a bit nicer. So you can see these are plastic. Those are metal. Um, and again, that plastic spacer I picked up on the McMaster car. So, all right, enough about that. Let's, uh, it looks like a 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Let's grab the, let's take those off, slide this cover off and see what it looks like. This thing's gonna be an uber edger by the time we're done. Looks like we got some hoses holding us on over here and here. Get a pair of pliers and see if we can yank those off. Probably would have been easier to do this before I mounted the engine, but I didn't have this thing then. Actually, you know what? I take it back. The new air cleaner comes with one of these hoses. So I guess we'll pull it out of the valve cover. Works for me. There we go. And it looks like we have a vent for the fuel tank up here. So we'll, let's undo it from the fuel tank to give us some more room to work on it on the bench. So. I just popped it off on top of the fuel tank. This whole thing slides off. You can see what it looks like on the back side here. There's a little clip on the top. It doesn't look like the new air cleaner housing has a spot for that, so you may have to 
kind of fabricate our own. That's just for admissions though, it's not super important. So, there's your air cleaner, old one. Let's see how well the new one fits. And it should fit perfectly. Whoops, sorry about that. I think that's it. This hose doesn't seem long enough though. Let's see if it's longer on the old one. not appear to be longer. Oh, maybe just because the carb was sneaking out. That could be it. Here's a problem. So even with this thing shoved on all the way, you see this stud is sticking out pretty far, but this stud, not even a single thread, it's pretty flush. So probably gonna back this carb stud out just a little bit. And to do that, we'll just thread on these existing nuts, jam them together. Actually, let's do it this way. We'll just stick a wrench on them and back it out. Okay, so we'll just jam these together best we can. It's not working, is it? Nuts are too thin. I need thinner wrenches. Okay, I found a old furniture wrench that I think will do the trick. So we'll just tighten this nut down a bit. See if we can just unscrew this now. There we go. Don't need to come out much. Okay, got these this stud here unscrewed a couple of turns. Now we can thread on our nut. So, we'll snug these down. Just gonna get this hose and the valve cover. It does feel a little short. Yeah, it definitely is. Let's see if I can pull a little bit of that off of a uh, air cleaner housing. There we go. I think that'll do it. You do lose your labels with this modification, but at least you get a much better air cleaner. Something that's much more suitable for use on a lawn edger, where there's, like I said, a lot of dust. And plus, 
you know what I really hate about these things? After a couple of years, they start to disintegrate and the engine en ends up sucking them inside to the intake. And then I've seen that happen on generators before, like, um, Hon like generators with the Honda GX390, um, the Subaru EX30 engine has a foam air cleaner and it's just, it's, it's, it's a nightmare, honestly. Cause then you got to check it on a pretty regular basis re and replace it. Um, I guess we should probably put this hose back in. Let's see, where can we fit that in? I might just drill a hole in this thing, call it a day, because this is just for emissions. When I say emissions, I'm using that term loosely. It's really a, a fuel tank vent. So we do kind of need one, and it'll probably leak gas if we just leave that thing open. So let's see if we can maybe drill a hole in the bottom here and just feed this thing through. Actually, no, no hole required. I just ran this hose from up here, down, around, under this little bracket here, or the little clamp. Just ran it up under this hole here. I think it's probably gonna stay, too. If not, then I'll just drill a hole somewhere, but if you don't have to, why do it, right? All right, folks, I think that's the finished product. I mean, this thing is fully mounted. Uh, we got an upgraded air cleaner installed. Uh, we replaced that old engine, again, just because, I mean, there wasn't anything super wrong with it, but just these, uh, how the fuel tank mount uh, mounts to the side of the motor was kind of flawed. And here, it's actually a much better design. So, unfortunately, it's a bigger engine, so it's gonna consume more fuel, although probably marginally more fuel. Uh, it's just way too big. I mean, this is a six and a half, seven horse engine on a lawn edger that normally comes with a two or three horse. So it's very much overkill, but it'll work. Um, so, all right, I guess that's it. If you like this video, please subscribe. Stay safe. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.